Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a number theory problem which I suggest you try out for a minimum of 10 minutes, ideally half an hour to an hour, hour and a half, though not more than three hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 10 minutes, you know, put your first ideas out on paper and now let's begin. This is a very nice number theory problem, you know, if you're in the medium trying to get to the IMO but you're not really comfortable attacking the IMO problems, you're like, I could almost feel I can do the short list, then this is a great problem for you. So, for every k that's a natural number, prove that there exists x and y that are natural numbers, not divisible by 3, such that this is true. Okay, so let's see, for k is equal to 1, what do we have? x equals y equals 1. Why are we doing this? Well, let's see if we can figure out a pattern if we have no ideas. And if you haven't done this already, if you had no ideas, and you haven't tried out a couple of k, 1 through, say, 5, to figure out what are the x and y, then I invite you to pause and try, go ahead and try to do them. So now let's continue with this, with k equals 2. What do we have? We need to have 9, 9 is 2 times 4, so we're going to have x, y is going to be 1 and 2, right? So. 2 times 4 squared plus 1 squared. Now let's go to 3. What do we have? x and y are equal to what? So we need 27. So the first idea is, okay, 25 plus 2 times. Okay, so there's 5 and 1. This is like 25 times, um, it's 25 plus 2 times 1. Let's see if there's others. So 16 plus, no, no. So this one has to be odd. So x could be, say, if x is 1, then we have y squared means to be 13, that doesn't work, and x can't be 3, so this is the only solution. Let's continue on with k equals 4. And it's important to you know, figure out if you're missing some solutions here at, any, at every single step of the way, just to make sure that, you know, that you're not. So now for k equals 4, what do we have? Well, we have... 81. So we're going to need so 64 fails. 49 minus 81 minus 49 is how much? Let's write that down on the board. 49. This is 81 minus 50 plus 1, which is 32, which is 2 times 4 squared. So we have x and y equal to 7 and 4. Do we have anything else? 81 minus, so we have 7 squared, 5 squared, 81 minus 25 is equal to, let's say, 81 minus 30 plus 5. This is how I do um, subtractions. So this is 51 plus 5, which is 56, over 2 is 27, which doesn't work out. Now, what about 81? 81 minus 9, we can just skip that. 81 minus 1 gives us a 40 and a 30. So it's one solution again for 7, 4 here. Now for k equals 5, what do we have? x and y. So we have 243. So these numbers were awfully close. These were like the biggest odd, like x was the biggest odd, I think, that wasn't free to k. So let's, so we have 243, I think 15 squared is the closest one here. And now, and this is just like an idea. It's like you notice these things and you want to test out your hypotheses and you see if they're true or not. 243 minus 225, what does this give us? So we have 18, I oh yeah, have 15 is divisible by 3, my bad, just that. This can't work out. Could something else work out maybe? Mm. Then maybe let's, let me just like keep it here for like 15 and 3, just in case like, I don't know, maybe there's something here. 15 and 3. Oh, that was actually 3 times. That was like, we multiplied this by 9 to get this one. Okay, but other than 15, there's 13 squared, which is 169. 
240 free minus this is 240 free minus 170 plus 1, which is equal to 244 minus 170, 24, get 74, right, 74, and then this divided by 2 gives us 38, 37, which doesn't work out. Okay, so that whole idea seems it's not working at least for now it's not working so let's see what else maybe it works for these even powers you know maybe that's the thing maybe if k is even we can have that and i'd actually want to test it out for six immediately like what would that look like if k is equal to two times s we would have the number would be so then 3 to the s squared is what we'd have here. And I would want x to be equal to 3 to the s minus 1. And then I'd have 3 to the 2s minus 3 to the 2s. So we'd have minus 3 to the 2s. Actually, let me just do 3 to the 2s uh, minus 1 plus 2 times free to the s. These two cancel out and we get 2 times free to the s minus 1 is 2y squared. Wait, how did I get something that's not functional? Oh, it's not this minus 1, it's actually this minus 2. So I have here a 4 minus 4, I need to have 2 times free to the s minus 2 be equal to y squared. This is not a square in general. It might have been just a, might have been just like you would s being small. So now we had a hypothesis, we tested it. It seems like, no, it does not work. But let's get back to this. So 13 we see fails. What about say, what's the next one? 11, 2, 4, 3, minus 1, 2, 1. The answer is 1, 2, 2, that over 2 is 61, fails. What about 9 we can't do? 49, that's what 7, gives us 2, 4, 3, minus 49. What is this going to equal? This is going to equal 1, 9, and a 4, 194. which is 2 minus, I think, 16 squared. 2 minus um, 14 squared, I think. And it's, it's useful. It's like, no, you'll, like the more you practice and do these math problems, I think you'll memorize the first 20, or maybe yeah, the first 20, I think, squares, you just like memorize by heart as you do the first, like maybe 30 or so prime numbers after a while. So we, or the or prime numbers up to like, 200 you sort of know when you see a number oh this is prime or this isn't prime but back to this so this over 2 is going to give us 90 something that's not a square 97 so now 7 does not work and I'm starting to get a bit worried that I might have made a calculation mistake somewhere now it's 2 for free minus 25 and what does this give us it gives us a 118 by this previous actually now it gives us 218 and that over 2 gives us 109 so this doesn't work as well so we need oh 242 over 2 is equal to 1 to 1 which is 11 squared wow saved by 11 1 and 11 interesting interesting when do we have a one when is if x is equal to a one we'll get y squared needs to be equal to three to the k over let's say k is a let's say k is divisible by two actually no let's just like it's going to equal one plus three plus all the way till three to the k minus one which isn't always a square again. Ah, uh, so this isn't working out. 
Okay, let's maybe look at now, pause for 10 to 15 minutes and try to look at what do we have with these numbers? Is there a way to get from maybe one to the other? Like if we had one solution, can we get to another solution? And I think, yeah, now's the time for you to pause. And here's the next sort of step. So what we have now is we're trying to see like if there's any relationship with these solutions. And maybe let's look at like what happens if I have x squared plus 2y squared is 3 to the k. I get 1 switches sides here every once in a while, every time I multiply by 9. But I don't have anything much. Let's see what happens when we multiply by say 3. We have 3 x squared plus 6y squared is 3 to the k plus 1. Is there any way to rearrange this as x minus some sort of number of y's squared plus 2 times x plus y times a squared, such that we get from this to another solution. Right, that's now the idea. Can I rearrange these in some way, shape, or form? And so I get to a solution. Maybe it's plus here or there's a minus here. Though actually, if I have plus 2a, I must have minus 2ya for the x's to cancel out. So, so that when I have here, I'll have minus 4xya. And here I'll have plus 4xya. Right, I'm looking to see like, if I can make them into something like this. So these things cancel out. And what will I need A to be? X is okay as is. I need A to be equal to what? So I have 4Y squared A squared plus 2Y squared A squared. So A needs to be equal to 1. So I need X minus 2Y squared plus X plus 2Y squared. Then this thing right here is equivalent to this. Now, actually X minus, it's X plus Y squared and X minus 2Y squared. Though, also I can, I should be able to switch up the plus and the minus. The plus and the minus really doesn't matter here. So it can also be X plus 2Y squared plus 2X minus Y squared. And this gives me a 4Y squared plus 2Y, yeah. So this gives me 6Y squared. When I started off from, I started off from this solution, I got to this one. Now, do these numbers follow this pattern? So here I have, say, X minus 2Y squared. That would give me, so X plus Y would give me a 2. X minus 2Y would give me a 1. Like 2Y minus X would give me a 1. And interestingly, if I plugged in this, it would give me a 3 and a 0, which is also a solution, but not the one we're looking for. And then here, I would have, how, how could I get a 5? I would have that as x plus 2y squared. And then x minus y would be the other one. But here, x minus y, 2y would be 0, and x plus y would be 3, which is also a solution, but not the one we're looking for. So now it seems like we can get from x to x from the solution x, y to solutions x minus 2y, x plus y, or x plus 2y, x minus y in the absolute values. And this is actually a sort of technique that is sometimes used in problems. You know, that you try to see, okay, if I have one solution, can I construct another one? Then can I construct another one and another one? And here is, that is the way this problem gets solved. So this is not really just finishing up the problem. That's what we're doing right now. We need to check a couple of these cases. And I invite you to actually pause for the next 5-10 minutes and check out these cases. Maybe write up a solution. So now the way we check out these cases is we'd say, if x is congruent to y, so if x is congruent to y, then we cannot choose this solution, we choose this one. And then x minus 2y is congruent to 
x plus y minus 3y, which is congruent to x plus y modulo 3. And this is congruent to 2x, which is congruent to x modulo 3. We could have also just like done that immediately. If x is congruent to 1, y is congruent to 2. So if x is congruent, yeah, let's just, if x is 1, y is 2, then we cannot use this one, so we have to use this one, and then we have x plus 2y is congruent to what? It's congruent to 1, and x minus y is also congruent to 1. Okay, and if it's the opposite, if it's 2, 1, which we think we had, we don't have, <laughs> we actually here we have that, 2, 1, what do we get? Well, we, x plus 2, y is congruent to actually 2. And if we get 2, 1, what do we use? We again have to use this one, so we don't get, actually, if 2, 1, we have to use this one, otherwise we'd get a number divisible by 3. So we use 2 and 1, and we get what? It's 2 minus 1 is 1, so we get 1 here, and a 1 here. So, right, 2, yeah. Actually, yeah, we get a, from here we get a 1, 1 pair. And now, so we, we'll get start from 1, 1 pair, 1, 2 pair, 2, 1 pair, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1. And we can literally just like say, this is how we're going to construct infinitely many x and y. Like for every k, we'll be able to construct x and, x and y starting from the pair 1, 1. And we'll just keep on, keep on, keep on going. But there's one thing to actually, that we need to be somewhat, just like we need to write that down, why this will never be zero. And the answer is because we made it so that the next pair we're constructing is always one or two modulo three. Since zero is zero modulo three, we'll never get there. Right, that's just one thing we needed to like just say. And you know, like, and it's interesting, like, 2 times 4 minus 7 is 1. And here we had 2 to 5 plus 2 times 1 and 5 minus 1. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, 2 minus 1 is 1. We could have also potentially maybe noticed that. And also, maybe could have we jumped from 1, 1 to 1, 5? Like when you apply this operation twice, I think the only issue is like you don't know this x minus y, what the sign of it will be. Like the sign of this absolute value, that can get tricky. But this was a way to show, really, sometimes you can start off with this. Forget, see like that's, you try some patterns, they don't work out. And then you need to take a step back and try to see, okay, let's see what happens if I have one solution, can I create another, which is a, Technique to use sometimes in problems, and you see, okay, what will this other solution look like? It has to look like this, and then I get this, A needs to be 1, and then I'm basically done. So this finishes up our nice little problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.